we can ignore the beginning part for now. First of all, the Big Bang was not an explosion. It was all space, stretching everywhere, all at once. The universe started very, very, very small and quickly expanded to the size of a football. The universe didn't expand into anything, space was just expanding into itself. The universe cannot expand into anything because the universe has no borders. There is, by definition, no outside the universe. The universe is all there is. In this hot, dense environment, energy manifested itself in particles that existed only for the tiniest glimpses of time. From gluons, pairs of quarks were created, which destroyed one another, perhaps after giving off more gluons. These found other short-lived quarks to interact with, forming new quark pairs and gluons again. Matter and energy were not just theoretically equivalent, it was so hot, they were practically the same stuff. Somewhere around this time, matter won over antimatter. Today, we're left with almost all matter and nearly no antimatter at all. Somehow, one billion and one matter particles were formed for every one billion particles of antimatter. Instead of one massive ultimate force in the universe, there were now several refined versions of it acting under different rules. By now, the universe has stretched to a billion kilometers in diameter, which leads to a decrease in temperature. The cycle of quarks being born and converted back to energy suddenly stops. From now on, we work with what we have. Quarks begin forming new particles, hadrons, like protons and neutrons. There are many, many combinations of quarks that can form all sorts of hadrons, but only very few are reasonably stable for any length of time. Please take a moment to appreciate that by now, only one second has passed since the beginning of everything. The universe, which has grown to 100 billion kilometers, is now cold enough to allow most of the neutrons to decay into protons and form the first atom, hydrogen. Imagine the universe at this point as an extremely hot soup, 10 billion degrees Celsius, filled with countless particles and energy. Over the next few minutes, things cooled and settled down very fast. Atoms formed out of hadrons and electrons, making for a stable and electrically neutral environment. Some call this period the Dark Age, because there were no stars and the hydrogen gas didn't allow visible light to move around. But what's the meaning of visible light anyway, when there's nothing alive yet that could have eyes? When the hydrogen gas clumped together after millions of years and gravity put it under great pressure, stars and galaxies began to form. Their radiation dissolved the stable hydrogen gas into a plasma that still permeates the universe today and allows visible light to pass. Finally, there was, was light. And what else could we do? We can also unlock the secrets of the Big Bang. You see, Einstein's equations break down at the instant of the Big Bang and the center of a black hole. The two most interesting places in the universe are beyond our reach using Einstein's equations. We need a higher theory, and that's where string theory comes in. String theory takes you before the Big Bang before Genesis itself. And what does string theory say? It says that there is a multiverse of universes. Where did the Big Bang come from? Well, Einstein's equations give us this compelling picture that we are like insects on a soap bubble, a gigantic soap bubble which is expanding, and we are trapped like flies on flypaper. We can't escape the soap bubble. And that's called the Big Bang Theory. String theory says there should be other bubbles out there in a multiverse of bubbles. When two universes collide, 
it can form another universe. When a universe splits in half, it can create two universes, and that, we think, is the Big Bang. The Big Bang is caused either by the collision of universes or by the fissioning of universes.